What's up, everybody? Puck Mike here, back with another video. So it has been one year since I started collecting hockey cards again, since I bought my first box of hockey cards. I think it was this one right here, this 2019-2020 Upper Deck Series 1 Retail. You know, I had some hockey cards as a kid. I don't know if I bought them. They were probably my brothers or my dad probably bought them when we were going to some of the uh, Penguins games. But I bought my first box and I was thinking, you know what? This is going to be portfolio diversification. I'm going to get rich off of these cards and they're going to be worth so much money. And I put some on eBay. Of course, I put the Junk Wax ones on eBay. They were weren't selling, but when I opened that first pack of hockey cards that I literally have not probably held a hockey card since I was a kid, I mean, I was a kid in a candy store, I was like, these are so stinking cool, brought me back so much, and you know, I only follow hockey, love hockey, I don't follow any other sports, so um, it was just so cool. So um, I'm going to talk today about some lessons I've learned over the past year. Uh, before I get into this video though, do me a favor, like, subscribe, uh, leave me a comment below, you subscribed, I'll be happy to respond to your comment. So um, first lesson I've learned... As I was saying, number one, uh, you might not get rich off of the hockey cards. So a lot of this uh, de depends on like the supply and demand in the market, uh, depends on the hype of the players, depends on what's going on with the players. Um, but, you know, like I said, I bought my cards and I put them on eBay and I was like, oh, the people are going to buy them, you know, even base cards I was putting on there. And there was not a lot of people um, buying those cards. The junk wax cards I put on there, definitely nobody was buying those. I mean, with the base cards, you might get, what, 99 cents if it's not like a McDavid or a Crosby. Even those ones, you're not going to get a ton for some of those. Um, so I quickly learned, like, wow, um, I'm probably not going to get rich off of these cards. So um, that leads me to the second point. You have to know why you're collecting, what you're doing it for. Once I realized, like, okay, I'm not going to get rich, probably, at least not super fast on a lot of the base cards, um, I kind of reevaluate, okay, why am I even collecting these cards? Like, it's okay to do it if you just enjoy it. So, yeah, maybe you're doing it because you just enjoy collecting cards. You're not in it for money. You're not doing videos. You just love collecting cards. And that's fine. Maybe you are in it for making money, in which case, you know, you're doing, um, you're doing the stuff on eBay. You're, you know, uh, you're listing all the base cards and, you know, maybe you'll sell 10, 15 of those and that's worth it to you because that's what you're doing. You figured out a system, how to list them quick and get them out quick. That's fine. That works for you. Then do that. Um, maybe you're doing both. Maybe you're trying to collect, you you know, you're collecting your team, you're collecting your um, certain players. Um, you know, maybe you're like myself, I've developed into, yes, I have collections. I have collections of a lot of players. Like I hold on to like, I'm holding on to some McDavid stuff, holding on to every Kaprizov card I pull, stuff like that. But, um, you know, in the hopes that maybe I'll sell that collection someday. Um, but I'm also, you know, with these YouTube videos, I'm essentially a content creator, right? So I'm content creating with the cards. I'm collecting some cards. I am selling some on the side, but that takes a lot of time. So, you know, you just got to find, you got to know why you're doing it. You don't have to be everything. It's just do, do what you enjoy when it comes to the cards, you know? Um, which leads me to the next point. You don't need to open every product. Okay. So I was doing this at the beginning too. Like when I was getting back into it, I was like, oh my gosh, there's, uh, there's this product there, you know, there's MVP. Oh my gosh, there's series one, there's series two, there's the ice product. There's this, oh, it's so expensive, but I need to open everything. I'm going to miss out on it. You don't have to open every single product. Okay. You need to open just First of all, what you can, you know, what you can afford, but open, um, you know, what what you like the most. I really like the Young Guns, okay? I like the AHL and the, um, like, early type. I think this is actually like a, is this a CHL? Yeah, this is a CHL. Um, I like stuff like this. This is an auto of Jordan Frosca. He was just signed by the Penguins, you know, and it's an early auto. It's a sticker auto, but... You know, he's got some potential, I think. He tore it up in the, I think it was the OHL last year. So, I mean, just, you know, just collect what you like. I mean, you'll learn as you open more stuff like, oh, I really like these. And it's okay to not, I mean, some of the Upper Deck products are pretty ugly in my opinion. So, and I did a whole video actually on some upcoming things that I'm going to be opening up. So, check that up there in the right-hand corner. But, um, yeah, just open what you like. You don't have to open every product every year. You can switch it up every year. Oh, next year I'm going to try this one. But um, you don't have to open everything all at once every year. 
Uh, number four thing I've learned. <laughs> Checklists are intentionally confusing uh, by Upper Deck. So um, I am convinced that Upper Deck uh, intentionally makes those checklists confusing because so look at, okay, they, they don't release production numbers typically for a lot of the cards. Obviously, if you get like a serial number, like there's only six of these cards, you know, or the Lafreniere rookie box. I think they let, you know, they release that there's only 25 autos. Okay. Um, but in general, they're typically not going to release production numbers because, you know, they don't want people to be able to do a lot of research and deduce like, okay, there's X number of, you know, young guns in a box and they've produced X number by this player. People can, um, and not everyone's going to do this cause it would be a lot of work, but people can, and people do this with the lower numbered serial cards. You know, they'll look on eBay, they'll see how many are listed or how many are sold. And then you can see, okay, well, you know, there's a lot of these already out of circulation based on production numbers. You know, my chances of getting that in buying a new box are slim. So um, that could potentially devalue some of the boxes that people buy and open. So they're not going to release production numbers for every card, unfortunately. But obviously, I think that is intentional because they, they don't want you to be able to, they don't want to devalue their product. So, but don't fret with that stuff, guys. The checklist, there is, um, you know, cardboard connection. That's one of the big ones I use a lot. Um, I think like Break Ninja or something like that is okay. Um, Carbon Connections probably become my go-to, but there's a ton of other sites with checklists. And even though sometimes like they don't make any sense, they're not right. There was an error recently with one of the ones I did. I think it was SP Hockey. It didn't make any sense. So, um, but yeah, don't feel bad that you cannot interpret that jargon on the back of the box. Just do your best. And, uh, yeah. So number five, when selling cards only sell on eBay, probably going to be some disagreement on this. I'm sure there's people probably making a lot of money off of eBay, uh, off, not on eBay. Um, but I had, you know, I have an Instagram at puck Mike, check it out or puck dot Mike, check it out. But, um, somebody had reached out to me saying, Oh, I want to buy some of your cards. And, um, you know, I didn't have them listed on eBay. It was like five or ten cards. I mean, the amount of time it would have taken me to list those ones on eBay, which I didn't even want to sell all of them. You know, but I, I what I mean is only sell on eBay. Don't, you know, don't do any backdoor deals like, oh, I'll send you this through Venmo, and then you send me the card, especially with higher, um, higher valued cards. You definitely don't want to do that because you could have some people uh, not sending you the money. So I only sell through eBay because it's secure and, yeah. Um, uh, number six here, collect what you can afford. So this goes back to, you know, you don't need to open every product. So I got back into the hobby a year ago. I have this YouTube channel. Um, I obviously want to open a lot of stuff for the channel cause I want you guys to see stuff. Um, but I also, you know, I have, uh, you know, I have to eat and I can't just open every product. So like, yeah, I would like to open clear cut coming out soon. It's like 150 bucks. It's one card. Okay. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, Black Diamond. I'd love to open Black Diamond. It's over three hundred dollars for what five, six, seven, eight cards. I'm not gonna do that right now. You know, open what you can afford. Eventually, I'd love to open those, but you know, you don't have to feel like you're missing out because you're not opening those products, and some of those honestly aren't even that great. So, open what you can afford. Um, I think the, I think the most I've paid for a box is is the Series One, Series Two. Um, probably gonna open. Um, oh, I can't remember which one it was coming out. I think it's like one fifty. Um, coming out at the end of September. Of course, I can't remember, but probably going to open some of those a little bit more expensive boxes, but um, I think it was the Ice, actually. Um, and then OPG Platinum, too, is a little bit more pricey. You know, I'll probably open that, but open what you can afford, and that's okay. Number seven. Uh, this is a silly one. PC equals personal collection. I don't know what this meant for a while. It's like, is it private collection? Is it, you know, personal collection? Um, and you know, a note on this, collect what you love, you know, it's okay to, you know, some people will focus on a theme. Some people are going to be like, Oh, I'm going to, um, you know, you can get as specific as I want to collect every person that, um, you know, every rookie that had more than 30 points in their first year, or, you know, everybody that, um, won the Stanley cup in their first year, you know, or every goalie that won the Stanley cup in their first year, you know? Some people get very specific with their collections. People get very specific with players. You know, you'll see people that IPC, um, you know, Tom Wilson. I mean, it's just, you know, random stuff. IPC, um, you know, Ty Smith. It's just some random things that people, and they collect every card they can of that person, which is, um, 
you know, which is cool. I mean, just collect what you love, collect what you, you know, I was doing a Penguins collection for a while. Like, I'm going to collect every Penguins player. But I shifted, I, you know, some of the cards. I'm like, these aren't going to be worth anything, and I don't like these players, and I don't think having them in the collection does anything. So I'm not collecting, like, every single Penguins card that I open, but I do have, like, a Penguins collection of, like, if I get an insert that, um, like, I have a Pierre-Olivier Joseph uh, rookie, patch, uh, rookie patch jersey. I'm going to keep that one because I don't have any. I think I only have a couple other of his cards. But if I pull, like, a base Kasperi Kapanen, I'm not going to keep that one because um, he sucks. But... You know, things like that. I mean, just, you know, you can be open to, and your collection will change over time, too. So, um, and then number eight here, last lesson, guys. Uh, don't trust loose packs like retail packs and hobby packs. Now, if you open from a company like, um, if you open the Boom Box or you open the Wax Box Club, I think you're probably safe there. Uh, I can't say for sure, but I'm, I'm, I think you're probably safe on those. But when I say don't open loose packs, when you go to eBay and you'll see, you know, uh, 2021, 2022, uh, extended series hobby pack. Um, I don't trust those because maybe from a, a retailer, I would uh, like from an online where you buy your cards, I might trust it. But if you look at, say, you're collecting young guns, okay, typically on a hobby box, there's six young guns a box. All right, so you can, uh, somebody can open the packs in that box, and before you finish opening all the packs, you've already got your six young guns. And for someone that only cares about young guns, you know, you'll, uh, you know, they'll be like, all right, well, I have six packs left in this box. I already got my young guns. I met those odds. Well, I'm just going to sell these hobby packs on eBay. Yes, you're going to potentially have some other inserts in those packs. Yes, you could have more than six young guns. But, um, you know, your chances of getting any inserts, especially when it comes to young guns, in those packs that they sell are, are seriously diminished because they've already opened most of the box. But you don't know that, though, and they're not going to tell you that, of course. So, I, I don't trust loose packs like that. I might buy them from a, a retail, like an online official retailer, official dealer. Um, I'll buy them from like the Wax Box Club or the Boom Box. But if I'm opening loose packs like that, like a random hockey packs break, I typically buy the box myself and then I'll just break it myself and I'll save those packs as loose packs and open it myself. That's typically what I do. But um, that's pretty much it, guys. Those are eight lessons I've learned in the last year since I've been collecting. Of course, the last thing you got to do is just have fun with it. If you're having a terrible time, then maybe it's time to switch it up. Um, just have fun with it. Um, let me know what you guys, you know, um, uh, what you do with it. I mean, if you have any uh, insight into any of the stuff I've shared, let me know why you collect. If you're, if you got your own YouTube channel, um, I've actually enjoyed getting into the YouTube channel side of it. I initially was not. Um, I wasn't like. I wasn't going to do a YouTube channel initially, but I was like, you know, I could just open these on YouTube. This would be kind of cool. And, you know, I've grown the channel a little bit here. I'm up to over 160 subscribers this year. I just started it this year. So appreciate the support there. Um, but, yeah, just I'm having fun with it. I'm going to open some MVP. I just ordered today, actually. I think it's coming out September 8th. Uh, probably going to do Platinum. Come, uh, There's a bunch of stuff that's supposedly coming out September 30th, but we know how that goes. So probably do Ice. Probably do, um, what was the other one? Platinum, I think, is coming out. And it's, again, Series 1 next year is supposed to be coming out early November. I don't believe any of these dates. But um, MVP, though, seems like it's safe to be coming out fairly soon. So that would be cool. I actually really like MVP. But thank you guys uh, so much for watching. Let me know in the comments uh, why you collect. Let me know who you collect. Would love to know. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that. And I'll leave a, and leave a comment below you subscribed. I'd be happy to respond to your comment. But thank you so much. Appreciate all the support on the channel. And, uh, yeah, I'll check you later.